Hi, welcome back. Well, in my previous videos about Windows Server 2022, we built a Hyper-V base image, and we also customized that image with sysprep unattend on Server 22. We got it to where we could automatically RDP into it and know the administrator password without having to log in in Hyper-V console. Basically, just deploy the machine with PowerShell and then turn it on and then log in via RDP. So pretty happy about that. But now I've got to build a new domain controller, a new certificate server, and a new sync server for my environment. Today, we're going to deploy the first domain controller in the first AD forest using a PowerShell command. Yeah, here's the, just the general script that I use for building the machine. We're going to set a static IP address. If there is a CD-ROM drive, we're going to give it the letter Z so it doesn't conflict with any drive letters if going up. Not that I'm going to have a bunch of crazy drive letters, but I just like to standardize every machine so that they all look the same. And if the CD-ROM is Z, then it's going to be Z on every server in my environment. Then disk part will format and mount an additional volume for data. Oh yeah, we'll label the drives so that they'll all look consistent. And we'll rename the computer and restart. Okay, so let's see. we we'll find our IP address of Tucson Domain Controller 2, and that's 192.168.1.83. I just deployed this virtual machine as I demonstrated in the previous video, so you're going to want to check that out. Right now, I'm just opening up PowerShell. Now, I don't really develop these as scripts that you can run. Certainly, you could do that. I'm just going to use it as kind of a palette. It's more like a tool palette because sometimes not all of the commands are applicable or they might run in a different order. So, trying to formalize it into a script isn't as, to me, isn't as intuitive as just copying and pasting segments of the code. Like right here, we're going to lose contact because we're going to we're connected to one IP address and we're setting it to another fixed IP address. So right now, we're just disconnected the session by setting a different IP address. So we'll have to go ahead and close this session. Yeah, you see connection was interrupted. Yeah, we can confirm the IP address did update to that 1.200. So let's edit our virtual machine from 83 to 200. Now we're going to go back in. There it is. Now I kind of stumbled over the CD-ROM drive because there isn't one and I was running the command and I get an error so I don't know if I cropped it out of this or not but yeah I just looked here and there's no CD-ROM drive attached so yeah see unexpected at this time. It's unexpected because there's no CD-ROM drive. Okay, so we'll go on with the disk part and mount and format that second volume there. Let's clean things up a bit. There we go, disk part. We're going to select the second volume and assign the drive letter F and format it with NTFS, of course. There we go. Now you can see they're both, the volume labels are local disk, local disk. So we want to go ahead and name these volumes for the machine and for the drive letter. Now oh, you missed the letter F there. Go back and get that. Yeah. There we go. That was fast. There, nice and standard, neat looking. You know what server you're on, you know what drive letter it is. Okay, next we're going to rename the computer, and of course we'll have to restart. I'll have all of this on a GitHub site somewhere. Look for the link down below. Okay, up next is install Windows feature, and it's all of the Active Directory related services, DNS, and the Group Policy Management Console. And then we're going to run install AD. DS Forest, Active Directory Domain Services, Active Directory Directory Services Forest. <laughs> Which is it? Leave a comment down below. We're going to make some interesting discoveries along the way here because, yeah, back in the day, 
domain mode was win 2008 R2 and forest mode was win 2008 R2. So let's look at the parameters for install ADDS forest. There we go, domain mode. And that's pretty interesting. Win 2012, win 2012 R2, and then for 2016 you choose either 7 or win threshold as the domain and forest function level. Essentially, 2019 has a schema update. It's one attribute added to the user object. There is no domain function level or forest level server 2019. And apparently there's no domain or forest function level server 2022 either. We will po poke in and take a look at that. Okay, so we're going to change that to win threshold. I wonder if that always just installs the latest. You notice we're using that F drive for the sysvol and the NTDS folders. Log path. Yeah, log path, sysvol, and database are all on F. Just separating the Active Directory data from the system uh, drive. Of course, there is no Active Directory domain yet. This will join the domain controller to the new domain. We're creating a new forest and building the first domain controller in that new forest with that one PowerShell command. Hey. You don't get to do this too often in production. I was thinking, you know, I've been with the company 20 years, 20, 22 years, and I've started maybe two or three new Active Directory forests. Most of the mistakes were already made by the time I become the Active Directory SME. <laughs> we're trying to shut domains down, not make more of them. We build a new greenfield do domain and attach that to our new Office 365 tenant. And then all of us from all the different domains, our identities transmitted into that domain using Quest Migration Manager. And then we're synced into the same a Azure AD Office 365 tenant using Azure AD Connect and that's all been my job all along and now every time I can shut down one of the old Active Directory domains I'm I'm happy to do so I'm down with I'm down for that okay here we go now we've installed the Windows features already now we're putting in the password there goes the install ADDS forest command We'll probably have to crop some of this out. You know, you're going to see progress indicators that aren't progressing very quickly. There we go. It's just running along. You'll get some error about DNS delegation. You can ignore that. Yeah, here it's checking to see if the group policy management console needs to be installed. We already know that. Now it's creating the directory partition schema. Directory partition, the domain, configuring DNS, securing various aspects of the system, file system and registry, and we're going to reboot. Yeah, it succeeded. Said so that's weird. Reboot required false, but it forces the reboot on you. There we go. It's restarting. Yeah, the domain name was aaco.local, NetBIOS domain name is aaco, and we saw all that bits of the install adds command. We talked about the domain and forest function levels. We talked about changing the path of the database and the log file and the sysvol to a data drive off of the system drive. So let's edit our machine to reflect the changes we've made. First of all, we're going to give it a name, Tucson Domain Controller 2. And we're going to change the user account used to log on to AACO Admin. And we're going to move the machine to the AACO Group. There we go. It appears up there under AACO. We go ahead and launch it. We're just going to do some basic Active Directory health check. Is this a domain controller or not? Now, one of the things, when you start up a domain controller, the DNS client is configured to look at that domain controller, and it really slows down that initial processing of group policy. 
it can take a long time for that machine to start so I cut that out um, sometimes you can get away with disconnecting the NIC in a, a virtual environment and it will jump past that if it's taking really long but for, don't forget to reconnect the NIC right away okay so we're opening Active Directory domains and trust Active Directory users and computers what else we want to see I think we're going to want to look at DNS. I should create a reverse lookup zone. Maybe I'll make a video about PowerShell, create a reverse lookup zone. <laughs> there we go. You can see the domain controllers registered in that AACO local domain. Active Directory. Yeah, it looks like it's all there. All of the default containers are anyway. While we're here, let's go ahead and create new containers for computer objects and for user objects because you can't apply a group policy to the default containers, computers, or users. Anything that's CN computers or CN users, you can't assign group policy. You can't link group policy to a, a container. You have to link group policy to an OU. There we go. New organizational unit, user objects, computer objects. Let's refresh. There we go. So now as we join other machines to the domain we can put them in computer objects and we'll create user objects in the user objects OU. There's my domain controller in the domain controller container. That's actually an OU because you can apply group policy to the domain controllers OU. Okay. Oh, okay. So here's our function levels. Yeah, let's check our function levels. So here's the forest function level and it says forest function level server 2016 and it's at the highest possible function level. There's nowhere to go past there. Let's check the domain. Yeah, click on domain. <laughs> click on the domain. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. And it, uh, it says it's server 2016 and that's the highest function level. Okay. So that confirms what we already read in that previous article there. Yeah, see, I have AACO Online verified in my Azure AD Office 365 tenant because that's going to be the public facing, like the email domain. And so we want to add that as a UPN suffix in Active Directory Domains and Trusts. Yeah, it's not there. It's in the first node. Yeah, you click right on Active Directory Domains and Trusts properties, add a UPN suffix, AACO.online. So now we're ready to build the sync server and start synchronizing users back to uh, Azure AD Office 365. It's no longer called Azure AD. It's Entra ID. So I'll start calling it Entra ID from now on. So don't leave a comment down below if you want to keep me honest on stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. So let's check the configuration of the DNS client and the DNS server. So you see here the domain controller is configured to look back at loopback. It actually has IPv6 enabled. I don't le like leaving IPv6 enabled if you don't configure it. Okay. It, don't leave. It's like having an appendix, you know. It doesn't do anything, but you're going to have to remove it surgically at some point if things go wrong. So it's better to take it out <laughs> to start with. But yeah, I'm checking the forwarders. So it's going to forward to the internet router and it's going to uh, resolve DNS against itself. And if there's no forwarders, then it's going to use root hints on the internet. So that's a pretty good basic setup for my home lab. Here I'm going into the properties of my ethernet connection. We're going to switch off that IPv6 because we're not configuring it. Okay, got any other questions, comments about Server 2022 Active Directory? Um, happy to make videos about some of the stuff if it's interesting enough. Look for the link in the description down below for my GitHub site where I'll leave some of this code here for you. Give this video a like and before you go watch more of my Windows Server Administration videos, please click on subscribe. Thank you very much.